I'm Chef Frank, this is Proto Cooks, and today we're making churros y chocolate. And as always, the recipe and all the equipment links are in the description down below. What are churros y chocolate? Churros are basically fried dough or donuts. Uh, they originate from Spain and Portugal, and then Spain, the Spanish and the Portuguese brought them with them to Central South America, Latin America. And there are different versions of these depending on where you go. And mine's kind of a mashup between the Spanish and the Mexican, uh, basically what I would get in New York City. Traditionally, the Spanish churros have flour, water, salt, and a little bit of oil in them. Mine is more of a pat de choux, which is more of a cream puff dough. Uh, that I feel is a little lighter, um, it has a little more flavor, and that's why I go with that. There's a few parts to what we're doing today. We're gonna make the dough and we're gonna make the chocolate. And uh, the chocolate's more like the Spaniards would do. It's for dipping your churros in. And then you could probably drink it too, but it's really rich and thick. Uh, but let's make the dough first and then we'll get into the chocolate. I'll talk about it a little more then. So this is what I have for the dough. I have some unsalted butter, some all-purpose flour, eggs, milk, water, some vanilla extract, some sugar, and some salt. Making pate choux is a technique that all cooks should know. It's a super versatile dough. You can use it to make eclairs, you can use it to make cream puffs, sweeter, savory, and in France they even use it to make pasta. So put in your tool belt, it'll come in handy. Okay, so let's make the dough. I'm gonna take my water and my milk, put it in the pot, my butter goes in, sugar and salt. Love it so far because it's basically dump everything in. And all we want to do is bring this to a, a boil and melt the butter. Make sure the salt and the sugar gets dissolved. It's important to bring this to a boil but not to let it reduce. So once it comes to a boil, that's when we're going to add our flour. So all right, it's come to a, a light simmer, it's starting to boil. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my flour all at once. And then I'm going to stir. I'm going to lower my temperature and stir. And I'm gonna make a, kind of like a dough ball in here. And you're gonna stir it really well. And I'm just gonna try and bring this together till it makes a nice stiff dough. And uh, we're also gonna cook some of the moisture out. We don't want this to be really wet. We want the flour to kind of cook just slightly. We don't want it to stick to the bottom. And the main characteristic we're looking for here is that it's pulling away from the sides, right? It should kind of make a nice dough ball. And we shut the heat off. So that's the first step of our dough. Check it out. I let it cool down for like a couple of minutes because if I add the eggs now, they're gonna cook. And I don't want them to cook, I just want them to incorporate. So I have um, three eggs in the bowl. I'm just gonna crack my last egg in there. I add my vanilla to the eggs. And now what I'm gonna do is my add my eggs one by one. Get the egg in there and really beat it in, right? It gets a little, it's a little difficult because everything kind of slides around and gets slippery, but I'm gonna do one egg at a time. Now, people will ask, can you do this in a mixer? Absolutely, you can do this in a mixer. You just don't wanna add all the eggs at once. You wanna incorporate the eggs one by one until they're incorporated and kind of in there, and then you add the next egg. So you see how it got, it tightened up. And again, you wanna do this while your, uh, your batter or your, your flour mixture is warm, right? Get those eggs in there, make sure you scrape down the sides. Takes a little bit of work, but this dough is worth the time. Uh, a wooden spoon works really well for this because the dough gets fairly stiff, and every time it absorbs, you can add another egg. Good, so dough is nice and smooth. Eggs are incorporated, good, okay? The eggs are incorporated, I'm gonna put it into a disposable pastry bag. Um, I have a tip for this. It's a star tip. Can you see that star tip? I'm gonna put it into my bag. Disposable pastry bags, you can find them online. I shake it down to the end and now I'm gonna figure out where to cut it because I just want this to poke out. So I kind of look right there, that's where I want it to poke out. I push the pastry tip down a little, right? Give it a shake and the tip just sticks out. That's what I want. I'm gonna fold it over and fold it over my hand. Kind of like make a C with my left hand. And we're gonna stuff the batter into the bag. Right, so I take the batter, I kind of scrape it on my finger so that I can get it into the bag. So the dough is still warm and that's okay. Uh, it's actually easier to work with when it's a little warm, but if it gets cold, it's fine too. 
give it a shake. You'll see that it's not necessarily coming out. I shake it down, I give it a twist two or three times, fold it over, and I'm just gonna put it aside for when it's time to fry. For my chocolate, this is what I have. Um, some milk, milk chocolate, dark chocolate, brown sugar, vanilla, cornstarch, heavy cream, and a little bit of brandy or cognac. For the chocolate sauce, it's really not that difficult. Uh, I'm gonna add my milk. That pot was really hot. Uh, I split my cream in two. The larger amount of cream I'm gonna add now. The smaller amount of cream I'm gonna use with my cornstarch to thicken this up. I'm gonna add my brown sugar. And I'm gonna let this come to a simmer before I add my chocolate. I have two utensils, I'm using a whisk and I'm using a rubber spatula just because sometimes you need to get into the corners of here and uh, the whisk doesn't get into the corners really well. Make sure our sugar dissolves. Okay, my milk has come to a simmer, about you know five, seven minutes. I'm gonna add my chocolate. I have milk and dark. Now, traditionally in Spain, you probably wouldn't see a lot of milk chocolate being used for this, but I like the milk chocolate. I think it rounds this out. And I'm just gonna get my whisk in there now and I'll use the spatula a little later. And I basically just wanna make sure all the chocolate is melted. There's nothing in the corners, there's nothing in the sides. Once my uh, chocolate, my milk came to a boil, I just lowered the heat. I don't really want this to boil anymore, I just want it to be hot. Lower the heat even more. I'm gonna go about, it's about 200. Now the chocolate is totally melted. I'm gonna shut this really low. I'm gonna add my vanilla. I'm gonna add a splash of my cognac or brandy. Okay, give that a whisk. I'm gonna take my heavy cream and my cornstarch, mix that together, and this is gonna be our slurry. This is what's gonna thicken everything up. Once this is nice and smooth, pour it in. Give it a good whisk until it thickens and the cornstarch cooks out. Keep on whisking because this will stick to the bottom of your pot. And basically once it comes up that back up to a simmer, you're good to go, shut it off. And we're gonna keep that warm until after we fry our churros. It's time to fry. I have everything I need. I got my dough, my oil is there. I have a bowl that I'm gonna put my churros into, a spider, and my cinnamon sugar. I also have a thermometer because I'm gonna check my temperature. And I'm about 328, 330, and that's where I wanna be with this. 330 to 340, no more. Uh, because if it's too high, if the oil is too high, things are gonna get brown before the inside is cooked, and I want the inside to be cooked, okay? So I'm at a good temperature, and uh, we're gonna fry. So with the pastry bag, the way that I use the pastry bag is twist. A lot of people try and squeeze this. It makes it impossible. It, you really can't squeeze things out, especially when it's a thick batter or dough like this. I twist it really tight, and then I'm gonna squeeze right in the middle. I'm gonna do two, two different shapes. Usually in Spain, they do it in a round circle. I'm not gonna do that one. I'm gonna do kind of like sticks, and I'm gonna do little like uh, U shapes. So for the sticks, I just squeeze the batter out. I let it drop in. I cut it off with my finger and lay it in. Same thing, squeeze. Lay it in, and I'll have nice kind of straight sticks. Every time I squeeze, I twist it a little so that this twist puts the pressure down, right? So it's not so much squeezing as it is twisting and putting pressure, right? And they're gonna fry, get nice and crispy on the outside, and nice and soft and like, like squishy on the inside. Anytime I see bubbles, that's good. The bubbles is basically the water cooking out of my dough. All right, they're golden brown. I don't need them to be super dark. I want it to be nice and golden brown. They're still gonna be a little nice and soft in the middle. I'm gonna just drain them off really good and put them into my bowl. And then I'm gonna put my cinnamon sugar over them. Give them a little toss. So you gotta do this while they're hot so the cinnamon sugar sticks. And look at that. Okay, let's do one more batch and then we'll plate up and taste. So for this batch, I'm just gonna do little uh, use. So I'm gonna let it stretch a little more, grab the end, attach it, and drop it in. 
let it stretch, grab the end, attach it and drop it in. This recipe makes about 20, so you can always make more. Drop it in, let these fry. All right, these are ready to go. Tap them off real good. Shut my oil off. Get all the excess oil off. Tap, tap, tap. Put our cinnamon sugar on them. Okay, coat them really well. Let's plate these up and taste. All right, let's plate them up. I'm just gonna give us a few of the sticks or the twigs and a few of our U's. Okay, uh, with the chocolate, sometimes it forms a little bit of skin on top. Just whisk it up, right? It's nice and thick, but just whisk it up. I have my nice mug that Chef Penny made. She throws pottery, so I have to put this in there. Right, keep this uh, chocolate nice and warm. You know, you probably don't need this much, but I'm gonna share with my camera lady. All right, let's taste. Uh, I'm gonna take one of these boys. I'm gonna dip. Look at how that chocolate sticks. That's what you want. The chocolate should stick. It shouldn't be too liquidy. It should be nice and thick. Give it a taste. Mm. Oh, delicious. Now, they're crunchy, but the inside is kind of like soft and squishy. So it's not like a traditional churro that you get, but they're absolutely delicious. I'm going for another round. Mm. The chocolate is rich and lightly sweet. You don't want this to be too sweet because uh, you can get like kind of fatigued with the sweetness. It's just, just bitter enough so that you can keep on going back. If you want, you can drink this too, but it's super thick. It's totally up to you. Okay, look at that. Look how thick it is. Ooh, baby. Dippy dip. And that's my churros. Please, in the comments, tell me about the best churro spot you've been to, how you make yours, Spain, Mexico, I don't care. Tell me where to go. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, give us a like, thumbs up, uh, hit the little bell to get uh, notified when we have new videos. We sell merch in the link down below, Need Salt t-shirts. Uh, we have an address, a P.O. box down below. Uh, and I want to thank all my patrons on Patreon for supporting us. Thank you so much, guys. And that's it. That's churros. I'm Chef Frank. This is Proto Cooks. Have a good one.